right, we're on the streets here, and your name is? Eddie Deason. Okay, Eddie. And I was walking around, and one thing to tell you, just look at people's shirts and stuff. I was looking at Eddie's shirt, and it's a St. David's uh, community church. It's not a black, white thing. It's not a Protestant, Catholic thing. It's not a gay, straight thing. It's a Jesus thing. And so are, what group are you here with? I'm here with St. David, my church. Okay, so St. David's. And what type of uh, church is it? Uh, it's uh, interdenominational. We're out in Gwinnett County. Currently, we're in uh, the Civic Center at, at Gwinnett County. And we, had, we meet every Sunday morning at 1030, just one service a week, but it lasts us all week. Okay. <laughs> and uh, y'all, you were telling me you have a booth set up here and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we're down at uh, P16, the main, the main road here, and uh, our pastor is uh, Greg Kennard. And uh, he's, he's just very energetic and very uh, open and, and just loving arms. And so um, what was, why, why do y'all have a booth set up? What was the reasoning behind doing that? Uh, Greg wanted to have a, a presence here because he's, we're an all accepting church. We want everybody to be comfortable, come to, and, and, and worship together and, and just be comfortable there. And so he wants to have, just like the shirt says, he wants to have everybody of, of any color or belief that, to come and be comfortable. I was, I was listening to a tape the other day and this guy said, uh, everybody should be, feel welcome at your church. But he said, if truth is preached, they, not everybody should feel comfortable. I thought it was an interesting statement because I think everyone, if you're a Christian, should treat it so they feel welcome around you. But as you speak truth, not everyone's going to be comfortable when truth is being preached. Well, that, that's very true. I agree with you, and and that is what we do as well. I mean, that's why we say he's Catholic and 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 other religions. You know, come there, listen to what he has to say. You know, God's message through him, and accept it as much as they want, and and leave the rest alone. Whatever is comfortable with them, and they believe, and, and it feels moves them, then that's what, you know, we don't try to change anybody. Uh, Eddie, do you believe there is uh, right and wrong? Do you believe there's right and wrong? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And so what, what is your standard for determining what is right and what is wrong? Well, if, if it brings, whatever you do, if it brings harm to you or someone else, in my personal belief, and, and uh, because God is the one that's going to forgive us in, in the end, not to, not to be judgmental, we should never be judgmental as to one another, but just, you know, within your heart, you're going to know your limits, and and God will tell you when you you need to stop. <laughs> and do you believe that uh, the Bible contains truth on right and wrong? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, if uh, do you believe murder's wrong? Uh, yes. Uh, and do you believe rape is wrong? Oh, yes. Uh, do you believe that um, uh, committing adultery is wrong? Yes. All right, and the Bible is very explicit on all of those. Uh, do you believe if you have teenagers at your church that are getting involved in sexual relations before they're married, do you believe that is wrong? Yes. And so do you believe that also if two men or two women lay together and have sex together, do you believe that's wrong also? Uh, no. Okay, and, and why don't you believe that that is wrong? Well, I, I can't say it like my pastor, David, but he, you know, he, I wish you were here to be interviewing him, but uh, you know, there's many uh, interpretations of the Bible, and that one is always brought out, and you know, and and very strong. But it's just we just believe in love, you know, love God and love people and, and love each other, and you know, it's just. So why why would you believe that those other sexual sins were wrong, but that sexual sin is not wrong? Well, all those others are violent sins, and they're what. Anyway. Well, if, if uh, two people are condoning an adultery, it's not a violent sin. Oh, okay, no, that's not. But, I mean, it's still, you put me on the spot. I ask you not to ask any hard questions, well, but anyway, I'm doing the best well, I can. I, no, I don't believe it's wrong. Uh, right. and, but, I mean, even though I don't particularly, in the open, with the holding hands and the kissing in public and all that, I think it should be a private thing in your home, but I don't feel it's wrong because it's between two loving people and God's a loving God if He's going to love us the way we are. And the, the, the reason I did that, I wasn't trying to put you on the spot, uh, because I have a lot of people that will tell me, uh, if they kind of do the buffet approach with the Bible. Like they'll believe this and they'll believe that, but as soon as that one contradicts it, I don't want to believe that one, I don't want to believe that one. What hit me one day is if I'm reading in the newspaper, uh, I read an article, I accept it as being true until it tells me it's not true. If I'm reading a book, if it says fiction, I know that's a non-true book, and I just know that. And what I couldn't figure out was when I began studying different religions a few years ago is that uh, as I studied all the historical evidence and the archaeological evidence and fulfilled properties, I know you can prove the Bible is true. It's very easy to do. But what hit me was as I began to read it, I couldn't just say, well, that one's not true and that is true because I couldn't decide where to stop and where to start. 
And so what I had to do is I read it, I had to realize that as the information played itself. I may not agree with something, but that doesn't make me the judge of it. God's the judge on whether that book was true or not. Well, it was brought out uh, last week or last week in the service that, you know, the Old Testament, we, we believe the whole Bible, but right. the Old Testament, it, it's more of a chastising. And you see, uh, we see a, uh, we're like, like a better word, a bad side of God, because he's like always bringing plagues and punishment for this and that and other. But then when Jesus came, it was more of a loving, forgiving, accepting. You know, so we, we flow in that direction. I do in our church stuff, but we believe also that the, the, the Old Testament as well. Right. But it just, but it was like the law, the Jewish law, and the uh, it was just very punishing. If you read so many of the things, all the plagues and everything. But right. when Jesus came, it was t turned, changed, and everything was just loving and caring, and, and there was no. Uh, for the sick and all, they would just they would put them away or kill them or whatever. Where Jesus would heal and, and and be kind and accept to everybody. If you had someone at your church that um, was smoking, let's say, and you knew that was going to take years off their life, would you encourage them not to smoke? I do that anyway, whether it's my church or not. Oh, you encourage people not to smoke? I do. I mean, I, I smoked, uh, but I quit in '74. And you haven't uh, smoked since 1974. I have not. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> if if someone at your church or anywhere was using drugs and or, or alcohol, just abusing it, that you could see physically it was tearing them down and they were going to kill themselves, would you try to encourage them to get off that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I saw the other day that uh, I tried this. Someone challenged me to try this, and I went to Google, a uh, search engine on the website, on the, on the Internet, and I put in homosexual lifestyle, and I hit enter. Do you know what shows up when you hit enter? No, I haven't. Been. I was blown away. Study after study after study all across the world that on average a homosexual will lose 20 to 30 years off their lifespan compared to a heterosexual. 30 years younger they're dying. Average homosexual dying at 42 years old. And I actually asked a lesbian this the other day, and she looked at me and said, oh, I know why. I said, well, why? She said the suicide rate is so high in the gay community. She said um, the drug and alcohol use is so high in the gay community. And she said, of course, the diseases that can cut our life short of that. So knowing that, don't you think you don't want to encourage people not to continue to walk down that road if it's going to cut their lifespan by that much? No, absolutely, and I do do so. I mean, I, I drink, but I drink in moderation. But, you know, it's, and I don't use drugs, but I, I never have. But yes, I, we we and I do encourage people the best like we can. I talk to, to get them. out of. I have a lot of friends that, that do some of that, and I, I I'm always on to them. I said, please, you know, you need to quit smoking. You need, you know, they don't how about drugs, a little bit? How about uh, getting out of the gay lifestyle since they're dying so much younger than heterosexual? I think that should be a choice. Uh, I mean, I don't encourage that because I am gay and I don't. Uh, I don't plan to get out of lifestyle. I just have to know how to live it to be to take care of myself as best I can, you know. And and if someone can't handle it, they need to find some some uh, counseling or something, you know. Don't do the suicide thing. But you know, I try to you know, talk to people about that too. But they're gonna people are gonna do what they're gonna do, and it's, it's sad, but it does happen a lot. And uh, what do you believe happens to us after we die? What do you believe happens? I've always believed that we do our soul does go to heaven. Heaven is not necessarily in the sky up there somewhere where we always point, but we, you know, that we will be accepted into the kingdom. And do you believe there's a hell also? Oh, absolutely. And so what separates who would get heaven and who would get hell? Those that believe in Jesus Christ and have given their life to him will, will be in heaven. So you believe that anyone who has not surrendered their heart and life to Jesus Christ will actually go to hell for all of eternity? That's the way I've been taught in my life, so yeah, I do believe that. Okay. And so are you doing anything to impact anybody's life to make sure lost people make sure that they're not going to hell for eternity? I witness about Christ as often as I can, you know, with people and you know, so a lot of people reject it, they don't even hear about it, talk about it, but that's why we're here today, so we can present that that image and, and talk to people today. So if someone says to you that uh, Jesus is no different than Muhammad or Buddha or Confucius, how would you respond to that? I don't know that much about those, the other religions, uh, but from what I've seen and heard, I, they're not as a loving uh, 
I don't see them being as a loving and accepting, but certainly not as an accepting as Christ would be, Christ believers. Uh, you've heard of the Ten Commandments, right? And we've all told a lie, which makes us a liar. We've all stolen something that makes us a thief. We've all lusted in our heart, which is the same as adultery, Jesus said. Uh, we've been angry with somebody without...